Hello, welcome back to Level 1 News. Today we're doing business and robot news, and it is the beginning of February, but I forgot to ask what day. Second. Second. February 2nd. 2-2, two, 2-0, two, two, oh, two, two. Time, time marches on. It'll be 200 years before it's 22-22. Thank God one won't live to see that, because <laughs> it's going to be a dark world. <laughs> I don't know, some of those AI stories in Elon Musk's brain implant... Maybe there'll be a copy of our consciousness that lives to see it. No, I die in this this time. Yeah, that's, that would be a hell, and I'm not willing to take that risk because that's because <laughs> you're putting Elon Musk in charge of your overall existence. Yeah, just as he wanted. You'll be forever enslaved, like in Warhammer. But instead of fighting the Tyranid horde, you'll be moderating Facebook posts. That was one of my favorite episodes of Black Mirror. Was uh, you know you can have your home AI assistant that's going to help you do things. And it's always perfect for you. They do a brain scan. But what they don't tell you is that they make a copy of your consciousness that runs the house, but you can't communicate directly with yourself. So they put a copy of your consciousness in a computer, and you're only allowed to make the house as awesome as, as you would want it because you know your preferences. But you can't, you're not, you, you, you exist outside the automation as well as the one. In, I don't know, it's a good story. That's exactly how your consciousness works. You have no access to the underlying hardware, and sometimes it betrays you. Yeah, yeah. It does things you don't want it to do because it ain't about what you want. You're just, your existence, your personality is just a feature to increase the survivability of the core machine. Yeah, well, the, the tech support company would show up sometimes when the house would malfunction, and the tech support person would come and was like, now you're trying to communicate with, your, with yourself or your host, so I have to punish you. And it creates the perception that 200 years has passed. And it's like 200 years of solitude. And it's like, okay, now actually only a few hours have passed. Are you going to do that again? And it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a social creature, please. Oops. Well, Intel has uh, come out with some new mobile processors. And so far, we only have one machine that can be obtained. I don't even know if you can buy this yet. But... This is a very powerful machine, and they have decided that this is going to be what they show you to prove to you that they are better than the other team. Perhaps they are now. Hot Hardware has the article Core i9 12900HK with RTX 3080 Ti review. MSI's GE76 Raider laptop screams. And oh boy, it does scream. Uses kind of a lot of power, though. What a strange way of describing it. It screams. Is that the real price for that? 1500 no, I, I, I can't be right. Yeah, that's no way. You're gonna, with the chip shortage, well, you're going to pay four grand for that thing. So, yeah, impressive. And in terms of uh, laptop chips, maybe. The 12900HK in benchmarks is unstoppable. But is that because of the power usage or because it's unstoppable? That is a place where you have to be very considered about power usage. Yeah. And you have to be considered about power, but not that kind of power, <laughs> but political power and the mood of the people for you to gain more power. Because in the case of Team Green, no one seems to want them to have it. NVIDIA is reportedly preparing to abandon its $40 billion takeover of ARM. Uh, it's not surprising. NVIDIA is looking at this and saying, you know what, we'll just invest this money in Risk Five. We don't need ARM. They were just every angle they were attacked from from the u.s from the uk and all around everybody hated this deal everybody wanted to stop it except softbank who owns arm well and nvidia yeah so I, <laughs> now I, nvidia uh the a side note the footnote for this is that softbank will probably consider an ipo for arm uh because this sale failed so it'll be interesting to see we'll know in probably six months if it was more value for shareholders to do an IPO or sale to NVIDIA, at least in the short term. Well, one thing we don't have to guess about is Apple. We know that they are powerful, that they control the world, and that they can have their way with governments all over the globe because of this. Apple revenue pops 11% to $123.9 billion, and Cook says the supply chain is improving, there at least for be, Apple. Yeah, I was going to say, there should be an asterisk there for <laughs> if you're Apple and you have one, $123.9 billion. Means they're going to lower prices, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> they care about their users. <laughs> We've switched to our own chips so that we can deliver a better value, but it's not going to be cheaper. And if you're looking at stock valuations and thinking to yourself, mm, yeah, the market knows, 
The market doesn't always know because the market can fall in love with these little darlings. And maybe there's some conditions in the world that make them suddenly extremely valuable. Maybe those conditions change. You got to be careful. Peloton should put itself up for sale and fire its CEO, an activist investor demands. Turns out there's not a huge market for $4,000 exercise bikes that require a subscription. Well, see, I think that's where they went wrong, was requiring the subscription. If they had not done that, they might have still been popular. Not only did they require the subscription, but remember all the ways that they were jerking people around during that time? Plus, there was the dog. All the safety stuff that they had problems with. They kind of screwed themselves. The treadmill ate a dog. Oh. Yeah. So they had a lot of bad PR. They had a bad business model, and I guess it finally has caught up to them. But they don't have to do what he says. They could try to keep it going. And uh, the chip shortage, of course, uh, I just saw the headline on one of those last news stories. Biden is back talking about the supply chain, talking about the chip shortage, because it really is going to be the number one thing in the next election, possibly the next two. Well, hey, not selling chips to Russia might help shore up our own. Yeah. (laughs) I kind of doubt it. Uh, Doubt it, too. But Intel has said that they are playing the long game and they're going to try to stop this eventually. Intel reveals plans for a massive new Ohio factory, congratulations Ohio, and fighting the chip shortage. So this is in time, so there's a lot of details here. It is going to be a massive facility and they are starting pretty much immediately. This is an interesting contrast, you know, we've covered like the Foxconn factory and uh, some other initiatives like that, Samsung in Texas I think, and there's a lot of political maneuvering and a lot of, it's like okay we're going to do this. And then, you know, off (laughs) off the start line, there's not really a lot of momentum, but here Intel is like, no, we've already requisitioned all of the heavy equipment. There's going to be 10,000 construction jobs. Let's go. If you're going to build one, it seems like Ohio would be a good spot because there's water available, unlike and in Arizona. They pointed out this will be far and away the biggest thing that's ever happened to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> like, there's never been a business anywhere near this size in Columbus, Ohio. So... I have a friend who lives in that area. I should ask her if she's heard anything about it. But, uh, yeah. Well, the Wisconsin thing, it's funny you bring up the Wisconsin thing because I'm pretty sure that was purely, I don't know how much money they threw at that, but I think that was purely to get Trump off their back. Because <laughs> he loved those headlines. Yeah. Like, he wanted to keep getting those headlines. And I think Foxconn was like, well, yeah, just give him a headline. <laughs> we built some massive empty buildings. Yeah. Here. Of course, Intel, wasted so many resources. Intel actually does that as a matter of strategy, though. Like they will build huge empty buildings that are ready to be fabs, and then build it or retool it however they need capacity. So, you know, even though they're not doing fabrication in Costa Rica anymore, those buildings are still there, and there's still a lot of stuff that belongs to Intel in Costa Rica. There's there's a few Intel things happening there, so it's pretty smart, really. And you really, as much as we've seen in the headlines about how bad things are at this facility, it's shocking to see this headline. But I guess when you treat your employees like that, you get stuff done. Fremont Tesla factory named the most efficient auto factory in America. It hedged out Toyota by about 500 vehicles in a month. In North America, I suspect Mexico might be spoiling (laughs) the the punch ball there. I also wondered if uh, Tesla's numbers were tainted by a lack of chips. I don't know, 8,500 cars a week. And uh, Toyota here in good old Kentucky only managed 8,400. <laughs> oh, it was 100. I thought it was 500 difference. But so, still, that's pretty good. Yeah, considering that in California he deals with all of those extra uh, rules and regulations about the environment, <laughs> plus the unionization stuff. Although, we're not even that worried about cadmium in the water table here. This is a non union shop. Mm. And uh, Toyota is very union. They do crap on it, but no, I thought aren't we right to work? In Toyota, I thought there was a Toyota union. I'm pretty sure Toyota has a union. Mm, okay, could be wrong. But. They do point out that yeah, now that he's moved to Texas, this is not the flagship anymore, but it is still cranking out the most cars because I guess it was already up and running. Cool. Did you see the story? I don't know if I because last week, like I read some of the stories, but I didn't remember exactly what I put in there. Did I put the one about the missing brake pads? I don't think no. so. A woman bought a Tesla, like off the lot or the showroom or whatever, however you do a Tesla, I guess picked it up or whatever. And it had 
no brake assembly on one of the wheels. And <laughs> she was driving. It still worked because the other, the other wheel stopped it. But she was just like, there's a terrible noise. And the people, the support center was like, oh, that's normal. Wow. If there was no brake. <laughs> <laughs> and how much money did she just spend on it, too? I think it was uh, probably like a Model 3. It wasn't one of the more expensive ones. It's like, no, I don't think that's normal. But it's normal. still a new car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was interesting. So they do seem to make some mistakes at that plant. <laughs> but they're getting them out. It doesn't matter that they're, you know, maybe a little janky. Issues. Yeah. Well, Windows 11 is, uh, you know, it's out there. People have it. But it does a lot of the little quality of life things they just haven't gotten around to yet, which is disgusting because it's been a while. But they're adding them very slowly. Windows 11 is getting Android apps, taskbar improvements, and more next month. So the way that they did the Windows subsystem for Linux, they're doing the Windows subsystem for Android. You can run Android on x86 under Windows. Woo! And you're going to put weather back in the taskbar and make a couple of, you can uh, drag to reorder your taskbar stuff, but you can't put it on the side yet. Still. Oh, tragic. Yeah. I just can't figure that out. And everybody was hyped, and I guess the hype has remained pretty high, despite yeah. the fact that no one can get it. Maybe that's actually helped it. I don't know. <laughs> but they say that it's coming. Will it? I don't know. But people are excited. Valve will start selling the Steam Deck on February 25th. I put my reservation in in July of 2021, according to the Steam webpage, and it says yours is not going to ship until quarter two. Well, they're saying that if you create a reservation now, 2022 might be out of the picture. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What if it's terrible? I hope it's not, but what if it is? I just can't imagine what I would play on it. Yeah. If, if you were traveling a lot, I guess it would be nice. I can see Wendell's use case for it because you travel more than But what of us. game are you going to play with that form factor? Uh, Prison Architect? Icarus? Not Icarus. Not, not Icarus. Icarus, yeah. <laughs> No, there, actually, there are some people that play Icarus with a controller, like the Xbox uh, controller. And those people are wrong. <laughs> We have done several stories like this, and uh, I believe Roku was one of them, right? Mm -hmm. And there was another company yep. that had already done it. I can't remember who it was, but it seems like this is going to inevitably, I think it may be Samsung, it seems like inevitably this is going to be in all of our televisions, and it's so infuriating. LG's latest announcement solidifies everything wrong with TVs. LG sent out a press release basically and said, we've got all these customers that use our TVs. Our TVs have checked in and they are ready for hot, delicious, fresh ads. Please sell us ads and we will make sure that they are delivered to our TV users. Not only that, these are going to be targeted ads. How are they going to target you? Well, probably based on what you consume on your LG TV. They know. They know the file names. They know the content. You're acting like most people are using file names and not URLs. <laughs> this person just watches House over and over, and it's the same episode. They keep falling asleep during it. I guess try to sell her medical supplies? I don't know. I would point out that we've done a lot of videos on setting up your own home media server and Raspberry Pis as, you know, you could just use your TV as a dumb TV and deal with, like, just jettison all of that nonsense. Or if you don't want to do that, certainly you want to pie hole your whole network. To stop those ads at the source. Yeah. Because <laughs> the TV's not going to let you block ads. You know, at this point, I think the pie hole will probably also block the LG telemetry, which is nice. Which would probably stop it from working. Yeah. yeah. You know, Krista, I bet they actually have a very, very fleshed out, uh, you know, like categorization for people who only watch House over and over. I bet they know exactly <laughs> what to sell you. I don't know. Yeah, I think... I watch House and I watch Thirty Rock, and like that's the only things I keep on in the background. There's a there's a lost episode of House, only five dollars. Pay now. It's really tragic that they didn't get to do an episode about the whole situation. Or just buy this Roomba and we'll waive that five dollar fee. And you can watch it right now. I, I have, have all the seasons on DVD, Sue. So I'd probably just be like, eh, screw this. I'll just watch it on DVD. That's illegal. <laughs> We're coming to get those. I wonder if the face, you know, the Facebook bot that's like the, the one that can wander around your house and be used for security. I wonder if that has object recognition in it, to where it can tell like what kind of furniture you have and stuff, and it uses that to also categorize your stuff. That would mean Facebook and LG work together. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I mean, they don't have to work together. I mean, maybe Facebook's building its own database with that kind of data. So one of the worst parts, and I mean the absolute worst parts of the pandemic, 
which actually it's not even part of the pandemic. You'd have to use it anyway, but it's more of, more of my life, and I hate it. <laughs> you have it. to use it more. Yeah. Is Microsoft Teams, Ugh. my God, it's, it's just so bad. It's <laughs> such a terrible piece of software. I really don't think that anybody uses any of the stuff they have to write. Like the Android team, the Microsoft team, nobody uses the software that they're working on, or it would not be so terrible. It doesn't always give you notifications. That's what makes that's the one thing that makes me really angry about Teams. So oh. it tries to be smart. The reason you don't get notifications. I think, because this is what I've experienced, is if you leave it maximized on a computer and then you switch computers, it thinks you're still sitting at the computer, the other computer, even if the screensaver is on. But if you deliberately minimize Teams or close it when you switch machines, the notifications will continue to work. I don't know. I feel like sometimes <laughs> that doesn't happen. Anyway, Teams is awful and we all hate using it, but apparently we are still being forced into it. Microsoft Teams surpasses 270 million monthly active users as the growth slows from the early days of the thing that we find ourselves in. Now, if you work for the Justice Department, this is probably grounds for investigating antitrust because if you had any other choice, if there was anything else you could use, you wouldn't be using it. Well, I mean, you know, I'm sure people are using other stuff. Remember Skype? Skype used to be amazing, and then... Here it and is. now... Yeah, now Skype's garbage. Yeah. I like Discord, but Discord doesn't have meeting scheduling in the same way that yeah, Teams this, does. Yeah. Discord is kind of like fun chat. Yeah. Whereas Teams is misery chat. Yeah. And I like having those be separate. I also like that Teams is more effective than Slack. How crazy is that? Slack was like, you know, the hipster web connected internet relay chat with GIFs. And now Discord has completely just <laughs> all over Slack. I love that. Another thing that was a terrible idea. And uh, I think most people called it at the time. I don't remember too many people actually supporting this. There were a lot of people who said, I don't think anybody will ever accept this. This will not be widely adopted. Turns out they were exactly right. Google kills off Flock and replaces it with topics. Flock, it was the you know, Federated Learning of Cohorts or something like that. Federated, yeah, Federated Learning of Cohorts. I got that right. I can't believe I got that right. It doesn't sound right. Um, and this was to replace cookies because cookies. So the EU looked at Flock and they said, that's a nice try to use a technical loophole in the, the, the law, but the law doesn't work that way. Law is a lot of the time based on intent. You're still tracking protected classes. So Flock is still illegal in the EU, and now we have this. And another story that we all already knew, and in fact has already been brought up by everybody in the EU and other lawmakers <laughs> and... That's a bit of a dead horse, except it's not dead. It's still trampling on our rights. <laughs> so maybe we'll try it again with another lawsuit. Google gets hit with a new lawsuit over deceptive location tracking. So turns out when you turn off location tracking, it's still being tracked. And the big thing in this lawsuit is not that you're being tracked. It's that you are being deceived into thinking that you can turn it off. When in fact, you can't. You did actually turn off one of the aspects of location tracking. But in order to track your location, you can use other sources of information. So when you disable location tracking, you disable location tracking from one particular sensor, which it doesn't necessarily mean that you're disabling tracking of your location. But I don't think the other apps have to abide by that. I think they can still pull from that sensor if they want to. Right. It's only the internal Google stuff yeah. that respects that setting. Yeah. So Facebook is still tracking you. Yeah. Which is weird that Google would let them do that, considering... Unless it was that way by design. Yeah, but then they're giving Facebook an advantage. I guess it's still better for them to have the, the <laughs> ecosystem. With, with the agreements that they have in place with Facebook, it's like Facebook says, we think this person is in this location, and Google says, okay, sounds good. Oh, <laughs> crap, I left the... It's fine. No, it's not, because I have to do a new... i got to remember to do that. We can't post that link. It's got my identity in it. Ooh. And uh, considering all that that we've just said about Google and how they do horrible things, get caught at it, and nothing happens. I mean, how many times have they been caught doing that? And they're still doing it. And that's why this should send a cold chill up your spine. Google Labs starts up a blockchain division. Google Labs tackles high potential long-term projects. I'm sure this is going to be right up there with the YouTube NFT project. I hate this universe. I hate this, <laughs> this reality we live in. Yeah, it's going to be awful. It's going to be awful. And uh, they kind of point out that 
they don't really have anything to show anybody yet. This is kind of like when everybody put blockchain. Oh uh, yeah, the, just in the description. Right. What does it mean? Who cares? Invest. Yeah. Although investing in Google's probably not a terrible idea. And how about Meta? We all know if Meta is just Facebook. I hate that we call them Meta now. Let's just I mean, they calling. own lots of properties, so. They'll always be Facebook. Yeah. Never forget. But they have decided that, uh, you know, machine learning, that is the future. And because they have all the money in the world, why not be the best at it? Meta has built an AI supercomputer that it says will be the world's fastest by the end of 2022. They're going to turn it loose on all those terabytes and terabytes of Facebook data. The end of 2022, oh, there'll be so much election data to feed that thing. <laughs> so it's going, it's all uh, those NVIDIA cards. They have an insane number of, oh yeah, here's the infographic. 6,080 NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA A100 GPUs. And look at that cache. 46 petabytes of cache. <laughs> Not a lot of misses if you're using that at home. It's impressive. And uh, you might have heard the phrase, rock and roll will never die. <laughs> it was coined by a man who was a big proponent of free speech, which apparently he's now rejecting <laughs> because his newest thing is to limit speech. Mm. NPR reports that Spotify has removed Neil Young's music after he objects to Joe Rogan's podcast. Isn't this just him? Choosing not to be published here? Uh, no, he said he wanted Joe Rogan taken down, and if they wouldn't do that, then he would no longer participate. Pretty sure that he just cut off his nose to spite his face. Yeah. Though I've seen a lot of people saying that they also got rid of Spotify now, which I doubt that's making much of a dent in their numbers, but... No. Absolutely not. I know you hate Joe Rogan, Krista, but he is the future of media. I hate that. <laughs> God, I hate that. Uh, yeah, Neil Young... I don't need more dude bros telling me to buy supplements. Neil Young, uh, it's it's a tough way to find out that you're irrelevant. Yeah, that's really tough. Because do, do you think he? There's part of me that thinks like surely he knew this wasn't going to work. No, but no. Yeah, yeah, probably not. If you're that, if you're used to being that famous, I guess. Chrissy, you probably are like too young, or you just don't care about classic rock. But you don't understand who Neil Young was. No, we talked about this on stream. I yeah, I have no no yeah. concept. Yeah, Crosby's, before my time. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Also, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. They wrote Ohio, which was like the protest song. And now he's on the other side of it. And he has no idea. He has no idea that he's the establishment now, mm -hmm. which is amazing. But, uh, you know, I like Neil Young. I like some of his music. And let me just say this to people. It's, it seems like people have this idea. It's like, oh, I have to abandon Neil Young now. No, no he's a dancing monkey. <laughs> You should never take your cues of how to live your life from the dancing monkeys, Joe Rogan included, and, and this. <laughs> yeah. You can enjoy the monkey's dance without believing what the monkey is saying. That's kind of how it was always designed to work. We've only entered into this world where we like trust the Kardashians lately. <laughs> that's what you got to reject. There's only ever been one person that's maybe not true, and that's Fred Rogers. <laughs> You trust him? He's just a shill for Big Neighbor. But if, if Mr. Rogers showed up and handed me a gun, and he's like, "You need to go do this," and I was like, "Okay, all right." <laughs> but he never took any stances. Like he didn't have, he didn't stand for anything. He was just, he kept it about yeah. what it was about. It was which, children's program. He yeah. stood for yeah. being a good person. Yeah, well, <laughs> and anything but the late stage capitalism that we were in, even in those days, Fred Rogers would be in a shallow grave. Mm -hmm. He so. would not survive. Joe Rogan would snap his neck. I want to see that in Rick and Morty now, the universe where where Mr. Rogers had to survive. <laughs> and, ha and, he, and he would do it, too. Yeah. He's the kind of guy I would expect to go, like, you know, full metal jacket the yeah. next day and be good at it. Uh, it's been a long time since any of us took standardized testing. Thank because, goodness. Yeah, and the, and the whole horrible college experience, man. It was great <laughs> when we did it, but I would not do it today. And I would not want to do any of this, but it is changing. I don't know. Do you think you'd have a better or worse chance at this version? Oh, much better. Because at three hours, my attention span was... Uh, <laughs> I remember gone. being really hungry toward seconds. the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really hungry, Krista? Yeah, I remember being hungry after this. Because you had to get up super early. And I remember I ate a good breakfast, but I was like ready for lunch by the time we were done. Yeah. 
It's a terrible experience, and I guess this probably will make it better. SAT will soon be all digital and shortened from three hours to two. Now they have said, I have not seen exactly what they're doing, but they're saying like, not we're not just moving it online. We're completely overhauling it because now we can do more interactive stuff with it. So this is going to be like an e-learning type of deal. Can they can they not have it at the ass crack of dawn? That's what I wanted. <laughs> well, I guess you could probably schedule it throughout the day, right? They probably could maybe back then too, but when I took it, I remember I had to do it really early. Was this one one of the ones where was this was this one that had a writing assessment? I took some tests that had a writing assessment. The SAT does by default ACT. You have to like get that specifically. D- default ACT doesn't. But I remember when I went to my college, I had to do the one with writing. I had to write. I I had I think I want to say that the first time I took it, uh, I didn't know you could request typing because I guess that was kind of a new thing. And then when the second time that I took it, it was like, oh, I can use a keyboard. Like yes, I put oh, in or whatever. Oh, we did do whatever. keyboard when I did it. And it was like you could you could do the writing part on a could typewriter or a keyboard or something. Well, they actually brought you a mechanical typewriter. No, you went into a different room. Wow. And, and did it there and. Uh, I, I scored dramatically higher being able to type versus writing it out. Writing is so antiquated, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we're definitely going to enter into a world where someone doesn't know how to write. Yeah. I feel like we're getting closer and closer. Yeah. Which well, I guess insanity. You could still print because you know the symbols. It takes too long. But it would be hard to do. Yeah. I, you know the crazy thing? I love the, the Pakistani reaction channel. But when they hand them a knife and fork... They're just like, oh, what is this? You know? <laughs> like they can't figure it out because you really have to condition yourself yeah. to use tools like that. And we just take it for granted. Well, it'd be like asking you to to eat with your hands. You wouldn't know the method for it. I don't know, Chris. I think I could figure that out. You could figure it out, but you wouldn't do it <laughs> nearly as well. Just, you wouldn't stay nearly as clean. <laughs> they have their own customs for that kind of thing that is yeah, well, completely different from how well, we you do. Well, no, they default to that because eventually they'll abandon the utensils and, they, and there's nothing clean about it. Yeah. <laughs> They're just scraping it up like an animal. I don't mm. know. Ethiopian food is served on a big circular piece of flatbread and you pinch the flatbread off and that keeps your hands clean. Right, yeah, there's like certain do. ways of doing it depending the, on the culture. The roti, as they uh, call it. That's their bread, roti. I'm learning some... Uh, Punjab words watching that channel great channel tribal people try oh uh, you know what i was reading this and i was thinking to myself uh i just got fiber uh last year am i any less engaged and the answer is i don't think i could be any less engaged <laughs> i'm already bottoming out faster internet speeds linked to lower civic engagement in the uk it's like you got that fiber optic cable piping in all of the local corruption it just makes you not want to participate at all Whereas yeah. without the fiber, maybe you're hopeful. It's like, hey, maybe we can make a difference. But can we think about this another way? Because the way I see this is broadband speeds are just getting better. We got correlation here, but we don't have causation. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I kind of agree with that. I don't think that's necessarily the cause of it. I think the causation is the overwhelming increase of hypocrisy and contradiction that we're seeing from our leadership. I mean, how many videos have you seen? And I won't even name any names. Choose choose the, the person you don't like where you'll have a video of them saying one thing and then hot cuts over and over of them contradicting that. Yeah. People react to that. Yeah. I think part of it, too, is that people don't really consider themselves citizens. They consider themselves consumers. So well, how, they're not giving me what I want, so whatever. Why would I consider myself a proud citizen when I see what my government is doing around the <laughs> yeah. world? And sometimes they weaponize that. So it's like, we're going to do this thing that's going to get everybody riled up so we can get away with this other thing that's much worse over here. And does anybody, this is a good engagement challenge, does anybody sit around thinking, oh, those stupid Russians? No, we don't think it's the Russians. Yeah. The Russian people, I don't believe, have any will for this the same way we don't have any will for it. (laughs) So why would you identify with that? Mark Cuban has a what well, seems like a really good idea. Could you detect any hook in this? Any barb? No, and it's really amazing. Some of the other stories. So I've read probably a dozen stories about this, and it is the stories themselves are much more interesting than what has been done. Are they trying to yes. shoot it down? Yeah. See, I just went straight to the website and looked at it, and I was like, this seems like kind of cool. I hope. No, CNN was very, very against this. Oh, CNN. Surprisingly. I, I hope you, that you're not suggesting. <laughs> I don't know. That the pharmaceutical industry. Might own a lot of things. Has some sort of influence. I don't know. It's spooky. 
I think Mark Cuban might. He, mm-hmm. You know what? Him and uh, Elon should go in together <laughs> on a better security team when they fly. <laughs> they really probably For different that. reasons. Mark Cuban on his online pharmacy. Our KPI is how much we can reduce the stress of our patients. So he started an online pharmacy that has generic versions of a bunch of drugs. He's handling fulfillment and that kind of stuff. So like the patent shenanigans where manufacturing is maybe a problem, he has enough money, he can handle that on his own. So insurance companies can't undermine it that way. The, 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 the VIG for this store is it's 15% above cost. So if it costs them a certain amount of money to make insulin, they charge that plus 15% and that's it. But the most important thing about it is, and the most risky for Mr. Cuban, is he is cutting out the entire healthcare industry. Yeah, they don't take insurance. You just pay for it. It's all cash. You do have to have a doctor prescription, because I was looking at it to see if I could get certain meds, and it's like, no, you can't just go in there and order. <laughs> oh, you just wanted to... I was like, yeah, I was like, can you do that? Like, that would be great, I'm, but I'm no. pretty sure you could just FaceTime with a doctor and get a prescription. For Probably. Mr. Cuban, I don't have a prescription, but I would like a pound of fentanyl, please. <laughs> I don't know if it... I don't think it carries no. any narcotics. I no. looked at their website. No, well, that's the other thing. Like, they'll, they'll never be able to carry anything that you can't mail, right? Yeah. And a lot of the drugs are really, really common drugs that have dramatically shot up in cost, like insulin, over the last yeah, few years. Yeah, but this is, this is kind of like the anti-Shkreli, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for, like, birth control or, like, antibiotics and stuff, and their prices were really reasonable compared to the average pharmacy, I thought. Oh, yeah, I think you're almost guaranteed to get the best price there, mm. which is amazing. There's another one uh, that I didn't know about before looking it up. It's called GoodRx, and it has similar prices as well. But obviously not the big name behind it. I, th- th- I'm not wearing them, but I have several pairs of the cheap Chinese prescription glasses. There is no difference. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. These were made in a Chinese yeah. lab, probably. <laughs> they so. were made in a Chinese lab. <laughs> <laughs> ah, didn't even think about that. Demonetized. <laughs> well, uh, this is one of those stories where like, it happens and then it gets retracted all before we can tell you about it. But it was more exciting when everybody was like up in arms, like, oh, they can't do this, and they took it back. <laughs> We're happy to inform you that Apple isn't requiring verification for education discounts anymore. So apparently you can just say, I work in education, and they don't verify it. But you can only buy one computer, or one laptop, one Mac Mini, two iPads, and two accessories, and that's it. I thought this story that's had it. screenshots. They used to, I don't know about Apple specifically, but a lot of places you had to have a .edu address. Right. They were not even enforcing that before. So they went from nothing to draconian, you have to like actually have a third-party company confirm you. Now we're back to nothing. Yeah. Uh, somebody made a bad decision there, I guess. And Mac OS, if you have your Mac OS and you have everything perfectly set up and it's just a beautiful workflow and you sit down, it's just like magic. As usual, what Apple will do is destroy features <laughs> and force you into new features. Mac OS 12.3 will break, break cloud storage features used by Dropbox and OneDrive. Apple, I mean, uh, Microsoft and the, the OneDrive and the Dropbox people have said, there's a new version that fixes that. Apple wants you to use a different API. They, they've deprecated an old API. They're using a new API. This has to do with, if your OneDrive is a couple of terabytes, and you've got the 128 gig Apple device. Obviously, the terabyte of information is not going to fit in there. So these cloud services will sort of uh, just in time download a file, hoping that your internet connection is better than your storage. And hoping that you're not using that free Facebook internet. Ooh. I'd burn that up real quick. Apple probably trying to get subscriptions for their storage service too, the Apple Cloud stuff. Yeah. Because the the iPad, it's always like, do you want to use Apple storage? And I'm like, no, I have a I have a drive. And well, they're we, like, are you sure? We know they're looking at those files, and they say it's for the CSAM stuff, right? Oh, I forgot to include the Google story. Oh, sorry. I'll quickly no. mention it. Yeah, so which one is it? The Google Drive story. A lot of people have been getting pop-ups now from Google that say your access to this file has been locked because it contains prohibited content. If you have a text file that contains only the number one, you're able to set that off. Oh, yeah. And, there, and it actually says, it's like, this decision cannot be appealed. There's no way that this is a mistake. We, we for sure already talked about that, didn't we? I thought we did, but maybe not. I didn't, I didn't see it. I've so. definitely been given that factoid <laughs> more than once. I but, think uh, people were talking about it on the forum, too. Yeah. So there, there's certain files that are just, you know, 20 bytes long or one byte long 
that trigger that. And so what kind of data set is, is Google using to train it? One, but two, how Orwellian is that? It's like, no, this file is prohibited. But it just contains the number one. Well, maybe one escape from this hell that we're living in is extraterrestrial overlords arriving and uh, taking our current crop of leaders and sending them away, perhaps into the sun, would be a good solution. <laughs> Please help us. And uh, that's just a dream. We don't have any evidence of that, but we do have an exciting new thing that's happening in space. Unknown space object beaming out radio signals every 18 minutes remains a mystery. It's Elon's car. This isn't anything new, but we figured out a whole bunch of things that it's not. And uh, this is so far unique in the cosmos, but we're going to look for more. We think maybe it's an ultra-dense magnetar. They have a great artist rendition of what that might look like. Look how cool that Ooh. is. Yeah. That looks like the middle of one of those electricity balls that they were really popular in the early 2000s. Do they oh, still yeah. sell those? Yes. We got one on the back shelf behind us. So the thing about this is usually these things would do this once per second. So this would have to be so dense and so highly magnetic that it would extend that to 18 minutes. Quite a thick boy. Actually, I guess it wouldn't be thick, would it? Just dense. <laughs> It's warping space and time. And perhaps we'll get a better look at it because the very, very agonizingly slow process <laughs> of the telescope as it uh, goes through its metamorphosis continues unabated. The James Webb Space Telescope arrives in its final orbit. It, uh, the, the pins have been deployed. It's, uh, it's cooling off right now so we can get some nice, clean imagery. It's crazy it takes that long for it to cool off. And it's got to calibrate... And that takes an incredible amount of time. They're clearly taking their time here, which I guess makes sense because when you put that much money up in space yeah. and if something goes wrong, you just can't do anything about it. Just go as fast as you can. Let's get this done. They're going to get it up and running and then they're going to do some test imaging and then they're going to find like there's a micrometeorite hole in one of the mirrors and it's just like... The lens cap's on. No. It's got a smudge. Yeah. There's a house fly on it crawling around. <laughs> that was one of the jokes on Twitter. Is like somebody's like, we got the first image, and it was just a blurry picture of remove before flight. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, perhaps if it does go wrong, we won't be completely helpless. We might be able to send it a little friend to try <laughs> and nudge it. But actually, these friends are not built for that. They're built, like many things that the government does, for surveillance. Space Force just launched satellites capable of quote-unquote inspecting enemy satellites. Oh, I'm sure they can do a lot more than that, just those functions. Also, uh, this section of the site, the war zone. <laughs> this is the, the drive, yeah. This is a paywall alternative, obviously. I wonder if it will, uh, if there will be a, a handshake communication for it to gain consent <laughs> before inspecting those satellites. No. This is actually not a unique capability. Russia had this capability before we did because uh, some of their satellites were shadowing some of our satellites, and that made the news. And we covered that. When they launched this, they should put a little T-shirt on it that says, Female Satellite Inspector. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, one of those uh, stories where it's just it's so deep of a science and the things they're doing here is so crazy it's really hard to understand even when quanta magazine lays it out for you <laughs> but it sounds cool researchers build ai that builds ai by using hyper networks researchers can now preemptively fine-tune artificial neural networks saving some of the time and expense of training so what they're talking about is you've got a data set and the, the data set is labeled stuff and it does training on the data set for the labeled stuff, but it doesn't use the whole data set. It randomly doesn't use some of the data set. And then it uses some of the rest of the same data set that's labeled to see how good it did training. And then it will automatically adjust depending on what the results of that was. But instead of incorporating the new images into the training, it actually adjusts the parameters that went into the original training set because maybe it is it has to do with how the actual AI, like how the neural net is tuned to pick up the, the, the features of those images or something like that. And it will retry, retrain and retry with uh, a different set of, you know, test images or whatever. While we have been living through some amazing things, we got the smartphone. Nobody saw the smartphone coming. 
it was it changed our lives in ways that nobody predicted. And yeah, I know Star Trek kind of kind of got a little bit of it, but not quite. And they didn't think it would be like that. But really, the one that growing up, this was everybody's yardstick. Yeah. And we were always like, "Where is it? We got all this other stuff. Where's the flying car? Why why can we not have that? Oh, spoiler. Oh, sorry. Right. Flying car wins airworthiness certification. It does not look remotely airworthy. Look at that spoiler. That is absurd. <laughs> I love it. I think it's probably important for the bigger stabilization. Than, bigger than my spoiler. So yeah, this thing uh, has done a like a, a short flight, seventy hours of total. T- oh, thirty-five minute flight between Nitra and Bratislava, Slovakia. I imagine they chose that because there's not a lot to fall down on top of in between the two. (laughs) Probably the FAA here was uh, a little bit uptight about such things, too. But next up, it's going to go from Paris to London. And that's going to be very telling on whether or not it's going to work. I did not see a price in here. Did you? I mean, it's probably still very conceptual, right? Experimental, yeah. But it takes uh, two and a half minutes to go from this to this. And they did not, also, they didn't talk about, like, what kind of runway you need, like how much takeoff space you need. Uh, Part of the article talks about a gyrocopter. Maybe it's a gyrocopter version, so that'd be very That was different. That's this thing. Yeah. There would be, if if this became widespread, there would be so much, so many more rules we would have to have for traffic in three dimensions. People can't handle two-dimensional traffic. The vast majority of drivers here can barely handle two dimensions. Yeah, and adding a a third. But that thing would also cost half a mil at least mm. yeah so i don't think it's gonna be that much of a problem uh, you know uh, the gyrocopters though gyrocopters are actually pretty inexpensive i mean you can get a decent one for like 25 grand death trap uh, well recycling chrissy you're kind of hyped for recycling yeah well so i live out in the country now so there are no recycling programs where i live but when we lived in the apartment we recycled and now we compost mm. so a lot of our food waste and like paper products and stuff we compost but you've also talked a lot about you hate the idea of a box that has too much printing on it or like you mentioned the paper smarties versus the plastic yeah i could compost this well probably this has got a lot of dye on it but i might be able to compost it if it's just straight paper but you're hyper aware of that kind of thing and you're constantly thinking about it and these people are saying there's no reason that you should have to think about that you should have a robot thinking about that for you a robot that is going to break down, I would say, in approximately three days. Yeah. Oh, oh, you hit it. Recycling should be easier. These home appliance startups are trying to help. Basically, you feed the robots your trash, and then they figure out which things are actually recyclable and which things are trash. And sh- break them down. It sounds like water might be involved. Shred them and compact them into neat cubes. Which the, you, I guess you could deliver those to the recycling plant or whatever. <laughs> you know, when, when planet Earth has a population of, you know, 12 or 15 billion, those would probably be required by law. Composting, I think, has become required in uh, California. Oh, <laughs> Boiler Snake has strong <laughs> thoughts about composting. He is an animal, so the environment means a lot to him. Yeah. But he hates the idea of compacting things, and we've never figured out why. Maybe because he lives inside of pipes. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm Traumatic so, experience as yeah. a child. Yeah. And we talked about the AI teaching the other AIs and how the data sets, you know, it's trying to make the most of its data set. But at Meta, they're trying to move beyond the data set. They want AI that can learn without being restricted to one thing, which kind of sounds like general artificial intelligence, which makes me think this is about as attainable as level five driving autonomy. (laughs) Meta researchers build an AI that learns equally well from visual, written, or spoken materials. So they say basically it's a generic AI and you feed it a book and it learns what's in the book or you feed it a video and it learns what's in the video. I don't know, this is is a little too meta, uh, pun intended, for it to make sense. And they didn't have a lot of examples in here, and I don't think this is something you can go play with. They're obviously not uh, getting that out for anybody else. And they did go through and said, eh, you know, it's not that close. <laughs> <laughs> it's learning, but not well. <laughs> this is a, an attempt to deflect people discussing things about, like, the DM currency sell-off and how they yeah. had a wallet that didn't support DM and blah, blah, blah. They're like, we're going to do a press release for this branch, and there, everyone there was just scrambling. And the PTSD from the moderators. And the fact that Facebook is rapidly losing relevance. Mm. Let's not forget that one. 
Oh, we should. Oh, it's. A, we, we. I can't wait for the video on nonsense on Friday. We have a. We have a video of the metaverse. No, is it the one I sent you guys earlier this week? I didn't know we included that. No, no, that one. We didn't include that one, but that one is funny too. Sweet baby rays. And finally, nod your headset. Just a, a fun little robot story. That yeah, you know, we'll see more and more of this as we get more and more robots. It's not that they have these ideas. But it looks like it, and it's fun when it does. <laughs> Robot vacuum cleaner escapes from Cambridge Travel Lodge. It was missing for 15 hours. It was eventually found outside under a bush. Is that a silver alert? <laughs> not a, not a copper. golden alert? Cop- yeah. Copper alert. <laughs> so there it was. We assume that one of these bushes around here is where it found itself. Probably filled with mulch. The sensor, the sensor apparently didn't detect the uh, door exit threshold, so it just kept right on going. I don't think they had the invisible wall there. It sounded like most of the time the bump up against the the door, like the bottom part of the door, was enough to turn it around. But for whatever reason, this model didn't react to that and just kept cruising. I like to imagine someone opened the door and escorted it out, and then was like, "Be free, buddy." <laughs> and why was the door wide open? It was exactly. probably an automatic door. It's like it slides, and somebody had come in and. Oh, you know what? I bet it, I bet a Roomba is enough to trigger that. Yeah. Maybe that's a good way to lose a lot of your heat. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's usually a double door. It's like open. They got an airlock. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to remember to correct this one tab. Woo! We will see you guys on Friday. I almost said next week, but it's Friday. Bye. Thank you.